Hey, it's Erica and welcome back to another video. So today's video is another addition to a series on playing The Sims 4 on a MacBook Air. Recently, I felt inspired to create a new save file, which I've actually been playing with for the past few months. But however, I decided to go back to playing with my original save file and I realized it was running really slow compared to the newer one that I created. I mean, of course, this isn't entirely surprising since the original save file has way more sims, more lots that I created over time, and with so many households and community lots and custom content, it's kind of no wonder that the game is starting to lag a bit. So in the spirit of decluttering, I thought it would be a great idea to clean up my personal save file to help it run a little smoother. So I'm going to go in and open up the game and I'm going to take you along how I'm decluttering my personal save file and give you some tips along the way that maybe you could use in your game as well. So let's get into it. First things first, we're going to start by going through the households. I have quite a few sims that I created or downloaded and never really played with, so I think it's time to say goodbye to them, or at least some of them. So what I'm going to do is just open household management and just go through all the sims that I have there, and you can also open the gallery and delete any unplayed households that you've downloaded from the gallery or that you've put in your save file in the gallery as well. So an important step in managing your save file is to limit the number of active households. The more households the game has to keep track of, the slower it can become. So consider reducing the number of active households by moving out sims you don't play with often or merging some households together. This can help free up some of the resources and improve the game's performance. When possible, you can also consider consolidating households by merging sims that you don't play with often. This can help reduce the number of active sims and lots in your save file. For example, if you have multiple single sims living on their own, you can either move them into one household like I've done here. This not only helps with game performance, but also makes it easier to keep track of your sims. So now that we have moved around our households, we're going to start working on the residential lots. And by this, I mean cleaning up and consolidating the residential lots. So for my main family, I have moved them around to a few different houses where a lot of them still have the furniture and the stuff that's left behind. And it's kind of a bit unnecessary to keep these homes since I probably won't ever move the Sims back into them. And they just have a lot of clutter that takes up a lot of space. So we could probably just go ahead and delete them. But before we go ahead and delete these houses, I want to open them up and check to make sure that they're worth saving to the gallery or just in case I ever want to keep them there or go back to them again. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter each of the lots to determine if I want to keep them before bulldozing them. I actually like the look of this house and I might want to use it again, so I'm just going to go ahead and save this to the gallery. To do this, all you're going to do is click on the gallery icon at the top of the build mode screen that says save lot to gallery, like I've shown here. So these instructions that I'm giving you in terms of saving the lot to the gallery, you, in the same area there is also the option to save the room if you just want to keep specific rooms of the house that you've built. Now I'm just going to go ahead and go through the lots that I want to get rid of, so I'll be back when I'm done. Now, in addition to deleting unused lots, I'm going to go into the lots that I do use and try my best to delete unnecessary items, or I might even downsize their homes entirely. When I'm reviewing each lot, I take the time to delete unnecessary items and clutter. So this is extra furniture, decorations, or other objects that can slow down the game. By clearing out these unused or necessary items, you can help your game run smoother. So focus on only keeping the essentials or the items that you really love and then get rid of the rest. So this lot that I have here, I know that it's a family I don't really play with often or even anymore at this point. So I'm gonna downsize their lot and split them up as necessary. One of the things I try to keep in mind when doing this is that every sim does not need a home. It's okay to have some of them be homeless, where I'll purposely leave them without a home until I decide if I want them in my storyline or not. So you can still access them in your game, you just don't have a house for them. 
Now, I love building and downloading lots from the gallery, especially those that enhance my game or make it more realistic, but some of these lots are not really optimized for performance, especially on a computer that can't really handle a lot of clutter. So what I'm gonna do is replace or I'll delete these lots that I don't use and that I know are too large and complex for my game. Following the same process that we did for the residential lots, we're just gonna go through the community ones. And some additional tips for managing these lots is to optimize the landscaping. So I often will optimize the landscaping by either simplifying or reducing the number of plants and decorative items on these lots. In addition, some of the lot traits and challenges can also impact your performance. So things like the eco lifestyle lots in terms of if you have natural sunlight, if you have like a hangout area, and also like stray pets, they can all kind of hinder your performance because you have too many sims or pets at this lot. So you can consider removing them or changing these traits that may be causing issues. You don't also need to have three traits. You could maybe do one trait, two traits, or none entirely. So moving on from the game, now that we've done our residential and community lots and our households, we're going to go on to decluttering our mod and CC content. While I love using CC and mods to enhance my gameplay, they can also be a major factor in slowing down the game. During this process, I like to use a few apps called The Sims 4 Studio, like I mentioned before, Mod Assistant and Automator, but I'm not going to discuss these apps in this video just because I've already posted a detailed video on how to declutter your mods in CC. I'll be sure to link the video in the apps that I use down in the description box below. So one of the tips that I do want to share with you today is about archiving mods in CC that you aren't currently using in your game. So instead of deleting them permanently, you can move them to a separate folder outside of your Sims 4 directory. This way you could also easily access and reinstall them later if you decide that you want to use them again. So archiving unused mods in CC can help speed up your game performance by reducing the amount of data that the game needs to load. So to do this, you could simply create a new folder on your desktop or an external drive and move the unused mods in CC files there. This keeps your mods folder more organized and helps your game run smoother. If you watched my previous video, which I will also link down below, on storing your Sims 4 game on a USB, you may recall my tips to get the most out of your external storage. In other words, storing your gameplay-specific mods in CC, your extra cast backgrounds, and your loading screens that you're not currently using but you don't want to get rid of, you can put all of these on your USB and then just basically have it off of your computer if you don't have enough space. So for this final part of the video, I'm going to talk about general housekeeping. So we've gone through and decluttered our save file inside and out, so let's talk about some essential housekeeping tips to ensure that your Sims 4 continues to run smoothly in the long term. Aside from regularly decluttering your mods in CC, there are a few maintenance tasks that you should incorporate into your gaming routine. First off, it's crucial to update your mods in CC regularly. Mod creators often release updates to improve compatibility, fix bugs, or add new features, and keeping your mods in CC up to date can prevent issues and bugs from occurring. So I did actually post another video on this on how I organize my mods folder and I discuss the resources that I use to ensure that my mods in CC are the latest versions, especially after there's been a patch update or a new game added. And you can find this video in the description box down below. Typically once I update my mods in CC, I like to repair the game using the repair option in the EA app or your preferred game launcher. This can help fix any corrupted game files that might be causing crashes or other performance issues. If you play The Sims 4 off of a USB, it's especially important to repair the game regularly to ensure optimal performance. Additionally, clearing the game cache and deleting last exception files from your MC command center after playing can prevent the accumulation of temporary files that could slow down your game over time. You can also consider deleting or relocating your in-game videos and screenshots just to ensure that your Sims 4 EA folder is not overloaded with content that you don't need. Another good practice is to monitor your game's performance and your system resources. If you notice significant lag or crashes, it might be time to revisit your mods in CC folder or consider adjusting your graphics settings. Well, that wraps up our journey of decluttering a save file in The Sims 4. By incorporating these housekeeping tips into your gaming routine and decluttering your save files, I'm certain you can maintain a smooth and enjoyable Sims 4 experience. Whether you're dealing with lag issues or just looking to streamline your gameplay, these tips should help you get started. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Sims 4 tips and gameplay content. Feel free to leave a comment below sharing your own decluttering strategies or any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!